Queen Mother Moore. Audley Moore was the daughter of parents Ella and St. Cry Moore, who were the children of former slaves. Moore's grandmother, Noah Henry, was born into slavery, the product of her mother being raped by her in slavery. Moore's grandfather was lynched, leaving her grandmother to raise five children on her own. Audley Moore was born on July 27, 1898, in New Iberia, Louisiana, where both of her parents would die before she graduated from fourth grade. She would become her family's primary caretaker as she learned how to become a hairdresser by the age of 15. In 1918, she was working as a volunteer nurse in the midst of an influenza outbreak. During World War I, she and her sisters worked in Anniston, Alabama to help create what she called the Black USO to help provide medical care and services for black soldiers. During the early 1920s, while traveling the country, she learned that racism was ingrained into the culture of the United States. It was not just the culture of the Southern state. After returning to Louisiana, she would experience a life-changing moment. She was able to hear the Honorable Marcus Garvey speak about black unity and collective black empowerment. Hearing the words of Garvey would lead her to becoming a member and eventually a leader of the United Negro Improvement Association. Moore, along with her husband and sisters, would move to Harlem, New York during the early 1920s. This is when she became active in the civil rights movement of the time. Despite repeated arrests, she organized the fault for domestic workers in the Bronx and helped black tenants fight against their white slumlords. In 1931, she participated in the march to Harlem along with the Communist Party to advocate for justice for the Scottsboro Board. She would later become a member of the Communist Party as well as the International Labor Defense. As a member of the Communist Party, Moore became the party's representative for the New York State Assembly in 1938 and Alderman in 1940. Queen Mother Moore was determined to make a difference for her people. She became a member of the National Association for Colored Women and the National Council of Negro Women. But by the 1950s, she ended her relationship with the Communist Party because it no longer supported self-determination for African Americans. Her next step was to found the Universal Association of Ethiopian Women, which was an anti-lynching group that also fought for the rights of African Americans on welfare and in prison. In 1957, Moore would present a petition supporting reparations, land, and self-determination against genocide to the United Nations. She would present a second petition in 1959. In her petition, she asked for a monetary sum of $200 billion and a returning of any African people who wanted to return to the continent. In 1963, she would form the Reparations Committee of Descendants of U.S. Slaves to further her demands for reparations. She would publish her analysis of reparations titled, Why Reparations? Reparations is the battle cry for the economic and social freedom of more than 25 million descendants of African slaves. Moore created a detailed analysis of why African people deserve reparations and how reparations could be paid out to the descendants of enslaved Africans. Moore was able to point to times in history where disenfranchised people have been paid reparations for their oppression. She was even able to provide information proving that the United States paid reparations to Japanese Americans for their mistreatment. Queen Mother Moore is most known for her international fight for reparations for African people. She was also known for her saying, reparations, reparations, keep on, keep on, we've got to win. Moore was able to mobilize and gain over one million signatures and present them to President Kennedy on the 100th anniversary of the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. During the 1960s, Moore was instrumental in the Republic of New Africa's independent charter as one of the first signers of the document. This charter would help create five independent African states which would also help in the process of creating independent African nations. She would travel extensively throughout the African continent during the 1960s and the 70s. During an Ashanti naming ceremony in Ghana, Audley Moore officially became Queen Mother Audley Moore. Her first act as Queen Mother was to help found the Eloise Moore College of African Studies, Vocational and Industrial School in Parksville, New York. Queen Mother Moore would die in May of 1997. But before her death, she was present for Nelson Mandela's visit to the U.S. in 1990 and was one of the five female speakers at the Million Man March in 1995. She was a woman on a mission to free her people and didn't allow anything to stop her. 
She spent the remainder of her adult life fighting for the reparations and the rights of African people. Queen Mother Artley Moore, we proudly, proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com. That is ontheshoulders1.com.